Hey, South Hand likes the math and history, and we are going to take a look at slopes in geometry. So, when you talk about slope, it kind of gives you memory lane. It kind of makes you want to memorize what happened in your algebra classes. We already know that slope is y divided by x, or I should say, rise divided by run. So we go up, then we go right. We also been talking a lot about in our algebra lessons about the slope formula. And that tells you what are the two, what are the, what is the slope between two points on a graph? So we can say m is going to be y2 divided by y, y2 minus by y1 divided by x2 minus x1. When we get a fraction, we get a slope. And we've also been familiar with y equals mx plus b. That is our slope intercept formula, or yeah, our slope intercept formula. y equals mx plus b, where m is denoted as the slope. When you think of slope in the first place, you might think of this. That is basically a game with slopes. The ball is using a slope, which means that in the game, it's a line, basically. So it has like rise and run. We are going to review the four different types of slopes that we've learned in algebra, but then also learn about two new types of slopes. Let's start with the positive slope. So a positive slope happens when you have a line on a graph and it goes from the left side to the right side and it's increasing. That is a positive slope. Here's an example where we would find a slope which would be increasing. So, did you see what just happened? I typed in the equation y equals 3x plus 0 for y-intercept, or slope-intercept formula. Notice how the slope represents 3x. So, basically, 3 is telling you you go up 3, and x means you go run one space. 3, 1, 3, run, like stairs. So a positive slope happens when the number for m or the coefficient is a positive number. m is going up. Here's an example of a positive slope. So that was an example of a positive slope. But what happens if we want to find the opposite of that positive slope? Well, the positives of that is there's a negative slope. Negative slopes are basically the same thing, but instead of increasing towards the sky, they, they decrease towards the ground. So let's say we go here and decrease all the way down there. Let's show an example and see what happens when we have a negative slope. What is the equation?
So for the equation, instead of putting y equals 3x, I'm going to say y equals negative 3x plus 0. So a negative slope happens when the coefficient of your variable or your slope is a negative number, causing the line to decrease. So you would go down, then go right. Down, right. Like you're going downstairs. So this is an example of a negative slope. Well, this part is pretty negative for Mario. Okay, that was a negative slope, and that was a negative thing for Mario to do. But what happens if we even don't have a slope? Well, we do have one, but it's called a zero slope. Or some teachers may actually call it no slope. So this time, instead of a graph going up or down that goes up towards like this way or up down towards like that way, well, a zero slope is basically a straight horizontal line. And it's basically simple as that. So, when it's a zero slope, there is not really something that goes up or down. You just run in a straight line and see what happens next. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a surprise at the end of the slope. Maybe something good or bad might happen. Well, let's see what happens when we try to put an equation in. So, when I wrote in the equation, y equals 3, basically, there's no x there. There's a missing x. So, if it's y plus 3, since this is the numeral number line for the y value, which is a vertical line that goes up and down, straight and back, then the y segment, or the y indicator, will be right here. But y equals 3 will extend the line right across. So, there is no slope in this one. Let's see what happens when Mario tries to find the surprise at the end of the slope. So Mario didn't really find anything exciting at the end. It just went forever and ever and ever. So zero slope means zero fun. No slope means no fun. But the next kind of slope doesn't really seem to look like a slope. So in this one, we have that graph again. But the thing about this one is, it's undefined because... Even though we have a slope which doesn't look like one that goes back and forth horizontally, we have one that goes up and down. So in this case scenario, let's see what happens when we try to insert into a problem. But the problem is, if we insert y, then we're going to get a horizontal line. But what if we insert for x? So when I enter an x into the formula, x is going to equal 3. And just like the last one, the x one is the horizontal one right here. 
the x line. But the reason why it's undefined is imagine you have like three on the top because that was our segment or measurement going up and down like an elevator. And we have to divide that by zero. Mathematicians never really find why you can't divide by zero, so it's undefined. Number two, the problem about that is it's not a slope because it goes up and down. There is no slope. For example, if Mario wants to safely get back downstairs or roll down a hill, how is he going to roll off a cliff? That is a problem. So let's see what happens when Mario tries to do and um, go on an undefined slope. I think I know why we understand that undefined slopes don't work. You fall into lava. So that is all the different slopes that we've been talking about in algebra. But we are going to take a look at new kinds of slopes. Ones that don't really require a lot of thinking, but they do require a lot of awareness. We are going to learn about 